Greetings everyone and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be taking a stroll up an 8.5 mile trail cutting across the White Mountains of New Hampshire, from Crawford Notch right up to the summit of Mount Washington. It's widely considered the oldest continuously maintained hiking trail in the whole of the United States. Rumored to be roamed both by ghostly manifestations and ancient forces predating the region's very settlement, are you sure you're ready to brave the history and hauntings of the legendary Crawford Path? Historically, in 1784, a party targeted at geological research and headed under American clergyman, Revolutionary War vet, U.S. House of Representatives member, and the very father of Ohio University himself, Manasseh Cutler, would traverse the area, during which time the adventurer and his troop would actually name Mount Washington. Through the 1790s, the Crawford family would settle locally, and in 1819, Ethan Allen Crawford, accompanied by his father, Abel, would chart and cut out what is now considered considered the first iteration of our modern Crawford Path, which was purposed to lead right from their residence up to Washington's summit. A year later, in 1820, Ethan would lead the first guided expeditions up the mountain along his new path, and through his endeavor, his group would subsequently name a number of additional peaks placed along the presidential range on their journey. In 1821, Ethan would construct a house atop the summit of Mount Washington, which would, in 1826, meet its downfall courtesy of a violent storm. In 1840, Thomas J. Crawford, who was one of Abel's younger sons, would convert the path into an equestrian trail, and by the early 20th century, the route would begin to accommodate droves of hikers and nature enthusiasts. More recently, on August 9th of 1994, and on its 175th anniversary no less, the Crawford Path would be recognized as a national recreation trail under the Forest Service. The Crawford Path remains open to this day, and traces its original route, except for in the section connecting the summits of Mount Monroe to Washington, which was altered to pass by the AMC's Lake of the Clouds hut. Notably, for any of our viewers wishing to participate in this trek, the most popular parking area for the Crawford Path sits adjacent to the AMC's Highland Center, right near Route 302 up the southern end of Mount Clinton Road. Chillingly, the whole of this mountainous region, and the Crawford Path in particular, have long been shrouded in a slew of local legends, ghost stories, and tales of encounters with the inexplicable. And those adventuring about have reported disembodied whispers heard amongst the trees, phantom voices, footsteps, and eerie laughter detected from vacant spaces, and the unnerving senses of being watched or being followed by something unseen, something that some claim feels evil in nature. Encounters with mysterious or even threatening cryptids are all but common, UFOs have been sighted in the skies above, and ominous, shadowy figures have been observed seemingly tailing the living at a distance. Easily the most famous Crawford Path legend intertwines with actual history to tell of a fateful June 30th, 1900 trek made by William Curtis and Alan Ormsby, who set off up the eight and a half mile trail in order to reach the Appalachian Mountain Club's annual meeting at Mount Washington's Summit House. While Curtis and Ormsby were warned that weather conditions were rapidly declining, and while multiple local sources would advise against their journey, the two would attempt to soldier on and would end up getting caught in a brutal storm. It's now understood that the party initially took shelter in scrub spruce placed just off of Oaks Gulf, right near where the Crawford Path touches the Mount Monroe Summit Loop Trail, and where sadly, Curtis's body was discovered the following morning. Subsequently, Ormsby's remains would be located within viewing distance of the summit. Following this tragedy, the two men's bodies were carried down the mountain aboard the Cog Railway, with a wooden cross erected in memorial of Ormsby, a bronze plaque placed on a boulder right near Curtis's death site, and a much-needed shelter constructed on the saddle between Monroe and Washington, which, by the way, that's since been replaced by our beloved Lake of the Clouds hut. Now, many tell the spirits of these two unfortunate travelers remain across the range. Several disturbing accounts tell that hikers passing by Ormsby's Cross who were critical of his party's decision to attempt to push through the bad weather, or of his lone decision to leave Curtis, or possibly at that point his remains behind in the name of survival, have literally been shoved or almost knocked over by a force unseen. Incidentally, a number of wary AMC officials have made a habit of exclaiming, it could have happened to anyone, while passing by his marker just to be safe. 
Regarding Curtis's marker, year after year, AMC crew members would find it detached from its boulder and sitting in the nearby hut's threshold. Following repeated re-hanging attempts, the crew finally decided to bolt the marker to the hut's wall instead. However, following periods of vacancy, astonishingly, they'd find its bolts or fixtures on the ground and would have to track the piece, often impressive distances over the saddle down. To date, those who have braved the Lake of the Clouds hut have reported chilling, pale faces sighted peering through the windows at night, the unnerving sensations of having icy, unseen hands gripping at arms or clothing, and both disembodied footsteps and other commotions that emanate from the basement when the expanse is supposed to be empty. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel deserves a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.